Welcome to this video tutorial on budgetary control. In this tutorial we're going to look at a question, the fine food eatery. If you have time you should check out my website danielkingaccounting.wordpress.com where you can download this question and a range of other questions as PDF files and also link to a number of video tutorials. Moving on we'll have a look at this question, the fine food eatery. So. The following information relates to the budget and actual results of the Fine Food Eatery, a popular restaurant in the centre of Dublin, for the first quarter, i.e. three months, of the current financial year. The budget, so what we have here is the budget information, or the plan. So they're budgeting for 75,000 covers, or 75,000 customers. The average spend per customer will be €10. Euro. The food and beverage cost per customer will be €4, euro, so that is a variable cost. The variable cost per customer will be one euro twenty. So the additional variable costs. The fixed labour cost is one hundred and fifty eight thousand, and the fixed overhead cost is seventy eight thousand. Now, if we just move down here, we can see we've moved three months down the road, and the actual results come in. So, in fact, there were eighty two thousand customers. The total revenue was six hundred fifty thousand six hundred sixty seven. The food and beverage cost came to two hundred seventy thousand five hundred euro. Total variable cost came to 85,000. The fixed labour cost came to 165,000, and the fixed overhead cost came to 65,000. So we have our budget and we have our actual results. Now, what we're asked to do is A, prepare a statement, so this is a budget control statement, showing the fixed budget, the flexible budget, the actual results, and the variances for each quarter. And then we've got that done. We're going to do in part B, prepare a statement which reconciles the original budgeted profit with the actual results. So, to start off, I'm going to draw up a budgetary control statement. And in the statement, I'm going to have a number of columns. I'm going to have a column for the fixed budget, I'm going to have a column for the flexible budget, I'm going to have a column for the actual results, and I'm going to have a column for the variances. And I'm going to lay out my financial information in a marginal costing format. So, if I just put up a blank... Uh, budget control statement here, this is what it would look like. Now do remember you can pause, rewind and play at any time. So this is the basic structure of our budget control statement. So I have the columns I mentioned, fixed budget, flexible budget, actual results, and variances. I've slotted in a little column here for units. We can see I've just already put in here the number of units, i.e. the number of customers or covers, is projected to be 75,000. And then down here I have my financial information in a marginal costing format. Sales less my variable costs, food and other variable costs, equals the contribution, less the fixed costs, equals the profit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reconstruct this. I'm going to reconstruct it by going back to the question. What I'll do first of all here is I'll just put in here my unit costs. So if I go back to the question here, I have the unit costs there. There's the average spend per customer, and there's the food and beverage, and other variable costs per customer. So I'm just going to pop those figures in. You can see here, the sales average spend per customer is projected to be 10 euro. The food cost, with food and beverage cost, is 4 euro per customer, and other variable costs, 120. So now what I can do is, I can reconstruct this part of my budget here. And it's relatively straightforward. So we expect to have 75,000 people. Each person is expected to spend 10 euro, so that would be projected revenue of €750,000. The food cost to feed these 75,000 people would be €4 Euro per person, which comes to 300000 And other variable costs would be 120 per person, which 120 by the 75,000 comes to 90000 Now, that gives me a total variable cost, so I'm just going to add these two up here, of 390000 and what I'll do is I'll take my sales, less my variable cost figure here, and that'll give me my contribution, which would be 360000 Now what I'll do is I'll pop in my fixed costs. And uh, they were just given to me. So if I go back here, I can see they're the two figures I'm looking for. The labour and the overhead, 58000 and 78000 So I'll put them in here, sorry, 158000 I'll put that in there, and 78,000. So that gives a total of 236,000. 
So now it's my contribution, this figure here, less my total variable costs, will give me my profit figure, which is 124,000. So that is the original budgeted profit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit. So if I tidy this up, this is what we'd have. So now I have the fixed budget done. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in the actual results. Now I'm just going to go back to the question and get the actual information. So if I go back to my question here, I can see here's my actual information. First thing to note is that there were actually 82,000 people. So I'm just going to pop that in for starters. So up here I'll put in 82,000 customers. And then I'll start popping in the financial information. So I'm just going to take it from here. Take these figures here. So my revenue, my variable costs, and my fixed costs. So I'm going to put them in that, in that order so I can work out my contribution and my overall profit. So I'm just going to drop these figures into my table. So back here, we see the actual revenue. No calculations here. I'm just copying it straight from the question. 650,667. The... Um, Food cost, 270,500, and the other variable costs, 85,000. So if I add those two together, I get 355,500. So now it's sales, less the total variable costs, will give me my contribution, which is 295,167. So that figure there is my contribution. Now I'm going to pop in here, I'm going to pop in the two fixed costs. So we have 165,000 for the fixed labor and 65,000 for the fixed overheads. Adding those two together, I get 230,000. So then finally in this section here, the actual results, I'll have my contribution here, less my total fixed costs, which would give me my actual profit figure of 65,000. 167. So that there is what actually happened. So now, just like the last time, I'll tidy this up a little bit. There we go. Now that I've completed the actual results, I'm going to put in the flexible budget. So the flexible budget is what should have happened given the actual level of activity. So my starting point here is I'm going to put in 82,000 people here. So there were, in fact, 82,000 customers or covers. So, given the fact that there were 82,000, what should have happened? So that's what we're going to put in here. So it's, given what actually happened, what would we have expected to happen? Well, we would have expected the fact that there were 82,000 people that come in, sit down, and they'd spend on average 10 euro head. So therefore, we would have expected the sales to be 820,000. We'd expect the variable cost figure to be four euro for food, four euro per person, times 82,000 people, so that would be 328,000. The other variable costs, they should have been 120 per person, times 82,000, so that would have been 98,400. So if I add those two together, I'll get my total variable costs. So this is what the variable cost should have been, given the fact that there were 82,000 people in the restaurant and therefore the contribution should have been well sales minus my variable costs will give me my contribution 393,600 now the fixed costs what's well, a little bit easier because fixed costs by definition are unaffected by change in the level of activity so therefore we would expect them to remain the same so I would expect the fixed cost I would have expected the fixed cost to be 158,000 for the labor and 78,000 for the overheads. So therefore I would have expected the total fixed cost to remain the exact same. So now I'll have my flexed budget contribution minus my fixed costs give me my flex budget profit which would work out as 157,600. Okay, so that is the flex budget, and the flex budget, or flexible budget, is given the fact that there were 82,000 customers, what would we have expected to happen? So what I'll do is, just like in the, the, the previous two columns there, I'll just tidy this up a little bit. So, tidying it up, that's what we have. 
Okay, this brings us on to the final section now, is we're going to calculate the variances. So, in calculating my variances, I'm going to first of all calculate a sales price variance, then I'm going to calculate the cost variances, and then finally I'll do a volume variance. So, with the sales price variance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare these two numbers here. Now, what I'd recommend is you find the difference. Forget about whether it's plus or minus. So, you get the difference between these two, and the difference works out at 169,333. And then we're going to label it with one of two little letters. We're going to label it with the letter A if it's adverse, which means it's detrimental to our profits, or B with the letter F if it's favorable, which means it would be beneficial to our profits. So all things being equal, we would expect the revenue should have been 820,000. It in fact was way lower. So we're worse off. So that is an adverse variance. And that's referred to as the sales price variance. I'm now going to move on to the cost variances. Uh, I'll compare these two figures here. So again, I'll get the difference. So that's 57,500 is the difference. Now, we were expect given the fact there were 82,000 people, we were expecting that the food cost would be 328,000. With 82,000 people, the food cost was only 270,500. So that is a reduction in a cost, which means in terms of the profit, we'd be better off so that's a favorable variance. Now, likewise with the other variable costs, you can see the difference there is 13,400. The cost has gone down, even though the number of customers here is all the same. But the cost has gone down, which means we'd be better off. So that is a favorable variance. Now, two costs remaining. We've got the labor cost, the fixed labor cost, and we can see that has actually gone up. The difference there is 7,000. The fixed cost increased, gone from 158 up to 165. So that is an adverse variance. But the fixed overhead costs, they've actually decreased. They've gone from 78 down to 165. So that is 13,000 favorable. So we can see here, if a revenue at the top here, revenue goes down, sales revenue goes down, we have an adverse variance but if a cost goes down we have favorable variances so just be careful when you're labeling them now these are all price or cost variances so i now also need to look at the volume variance what we want to reconcile is the difference between here the original budget of profit and the actual results the difference is caused by changes in prices costs and volumes and we're going to compare these two figures here to get the impact of the change in volume. So this column here is drawn up based on 75,000 customers projected, but using the original budget information. This column here is drawn up on the increased volume, but used the exact same prices and costs. So the only difference between these two here is the difference caused by change in volume. Now the difference is 33,600 and all things being equal given the fact that the volume went from a budget of 75,000 up to an actual 82,000 that should have driven up the profit so that is a favorable variance all things being equal that would have driven up the profit by 33,600 okay so I'm just going to tidy this up and I'll just put a little highlighter here to link and show which ones we've actually compared in calculating the variances. If I pop that in, that's what we have. So we compare these two, these two, these two, these two, these two, and for the volume variance, we compared these two. Okay. That completes the budget control statement, which is part A. So we move on now and look at the reconciliation in part B. So do remember when you're going through this that you can pause, rewind and play at any point. So just back to the question. Here we see we've completed part A, prepare our statement, and now move on to part B. Prepare a statement reconciling the original budgeted profit, which we've now worked out. We saw the 124,000 with the actual results, 
the actual profit there, 65,167. So just going back to our table there, so we want to reconcile this figure here with this figure here, and we're going to use the variances. So I'm just going to set up a very simple little reconciliation. I'm going to start off with the original budgeted profit. I'm going to list all my variances, and I should end up with the actual profit. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group my variances. There's not really much in this here, but because they're already grouped. But I'm going to take my sales price variance, which is this one here, and I'm going to put it beside my sales volume variance. So I've got sales price, sales volume variance. I then keep my two variable cost variance together, and I keep my two fixed cost variance together. So my little reconciliation will look like this. The original budgeted profit, 124000 Then I've got my sales price variance, and my sales volume variance, my food cost variance, my other variable cost variance, my labor fixed labor cost variance, and my fixed overhead cost variance. Now I'm going to list all the variances here, and if a variance is adverse, it means it would be detrimental to profit, so I'm going to treat it as a minus figure. If it's favorable, it means it would boost profit, or beneficial to profit, so I'll treat it as a plus figure. So I'm just going to hop back and forward now between my table here and the calculation I did in my budget control statement and fill in the blanks. So back here, the sales price variance, 169,333 adverse. So I'll put that in there. So that is 169,333 adverse. The sales volume variance, 33,600 favorable. So I'll put that in there. 33,600 favorable. The food cost variance, 57,500 favorable. And the other variable cost variance, you can see 13,400 favorable. And then finally, the fixed costs. We have 7,000 adverse for the fixed labor and 13,000 favorable for the fixed overheads. So we've got 7,000 adverse and 13,000 favorable. So I'm going to add this column up now. And I'm going to treat anything with an adverse variance like a minus figure and anything with a favorable variance like, with a, like a positive figure. So I'll have minus 169,333, plus 33,600, plus 57,500, plus 13,400, minus 7,000, plus 13,000. Now, what will happen there is if I add them all like that, I'll end up with a figure of 58,833, which would be a minus figure. So therefore, I'll treat that as an adverse variance. And then, since this is detrimental to profit, and it'll drag my profit down, I will subtract it from my original budgeted profit, and I should end up with my actual profit. So, 124,000 minus 58,833 gives me 65,167. Okay, let's just check that. I'll go back here. Original budgeted profit, 124,000. Actual profit, 65,167. So you can see here, tidying up a little bit, it's right. So I've reconciled the original budget profit to the actual results, or the actual profit, using my variances. So, back to the question then. We can see what we've done is we have completed uh, part A and part B, and therefore we've completed the whole question. So, I hope you found that beneficial. So remember, this is the budget control area, and we're looking at a question called the Fine Food Eatery. And if you'd like any further questions or links to other videos, or to download any questions, please visit my website. So, that's it. Thank you very much.